Hello. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to start building dashboards in R. Uh, now, R is a lot less purpose-built uh, for making dashboards than Tableau is, and so it's going to make you work a little bit harder. Uh, so why bother doing it in R in the first place? Well, for one thing, you get access to all the other parts of R. Uh, so you get access to ggplot, which we've learned a lot about, you know, all the ups and downs of using ggplot, uh, as well as all the data processing stuff that we are, are going to have a little bit more easier time of doing uh, in R than perhaps in Tableau or Excel. That's why you might want to do it in R. In addition, there are some benefits specifically of doing the dashboards in R. So for one thing, uh, it's a lot easier and freer uh, to host your dashboard online. It's just a one button click kind of thing and then it just goes online for free uh, as long as it doesn't take up a whole lot of space. Also, you get access to something called Shiny, uh, which is a interactive system for building, it's basically a system for building in these interactive websites that really allow people to explore data. Uh, so how uh, can we start doing this? So we're gonna, there's two different ways to do dashboards in R. We're gonna specifically be doing uh, Flex Dashboard, which I think is a little bit easier to work with. And it does, uh, the other way to do it is with Shiny specific, uh, directly, but I think that's a little bit harder. Uh, and the Flex Dashboard will also give us access to Shiny uh, itself anyway, just not the Shiny Dashboard system. Anyway, so we can get into this, uh, first of all, by installing the Flex Dashboard package, which you would install like any normal package. I've already got it installed, so I'm not gonna bother with it. Uh, once we have it installed, uh, all we gotta do is we gotta go File, New File, and R Markdown. So this is gonna be an R Markdown document. We've already learned how to use R Markdown, so a lot of those skills that we knew from R Markdown are gonna carry over here as well, super easy. Uh, so. Instead of just creating a document as we did before, we're gonna go down to From Template. And in the Template Options, we should see uh, Flex Dashboard as being an option. There it is, Flex Dashboard, I'm gonna click on that. And this will open up for me uh, a blank flash, text board, uh, flash dashboard, Flex Dashboard template that we can fill in. So the way that Flex Dashboard templates work out is that they're just like our Markdown documents. We have the YAML section up top. It tells me that our, my output is gonna be a Flex dashboard uh, and specifically it's going to be an html document with all of these graphs uh, in it uh, and uh, it's going to tell me the orientation there's a couple of different options for how you want to orient your flex dashboard the standard way is with columns where you have columns of stuff uh, and then in it you have different images uh, and you can of course adjust how wide those columns are um, and uh, so once we have that, we have our, our setup chunk of code uh, in which we need to load the Flex Dashboard library. That's also where we might load uh, other libraries that we would want in there and maybe do some sort of data loading and pre-processing and everything like that. Uh, and then uh, down here, we start defining our columns. Columns are defined pretty straight in a pretty straightforward way. We say, hey, it's a column. Uh, we put some curly braces and say how wide that column needs to be. So maybe one column needs to be wider than the other. Uh, then I'm gonna put these, uh, these dashes to offset the, type, the start of the column from the actual content of it. Inside the column, I have sections, just like I would have in a regular R Markdown document. The title of those sections here, this is chart A, and then this is the code chunk that's gonna produce uh, chart A. Uh, and then I've got another column down here, which is gonna have chart B and chart C. And so when I run this, I'm gonna have column A, and it's gonna have graph A from, that, from chart A right there. Uh, and then over here, I'm gonna have the, these two chart B and chart C on top of each other going down those columns. I can, of course, add as much here as I want. Um, that's pretty much it. It's pretty straightforward. It's not that difficult uh, to get in there. If all you're doing is taking the ggplot graphs that you've already created and putting them on, super, super easy. You just put the code in there, put the code in, uh, make the code chunks be the, the code that generates your graphs, and you're good to go. Uh, once you have your stuff ready, uh, all you're going to do is click the knit button and that will, just like in a regular R Markdown document, run all of your, all of your code, create all of your graphs and output the dashboard that you want. Um, I've, I've got an example here with the code filled in. So here up here at the top, you can see that I'm loading the libraries that I need uh, and I'm also loading some data uh, and I'm doing a couple of manipulations to that data. Again, that's one of the nice things about uh, R is that you can do that, that manipulation in very easily. I've also got the title for my dashboard up here. Uh, down here, I've got my two columns. Uh, my first column uh, is I've got a GDP versus po population graph uh, that I'm creating. Uh, and then I'm doing it again uh, with something called ggplot, really, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, and it's the same graph which th run through this uh, thing. So notice, by the way, this isn't something we've done a whole lot, but when you create a ggplot, uh, it's actually an object and you can store that object in a variable. Uh, so here I've created this ggplot. If I just ran this highlighted code by itself, it would just create 
uh, that, that graph for me, but I'm not doing that. And so I'm storing it in this variable P. And then when I want it to print, I just put the P on a line all by itself and it will print that graph. What that means is that I can then run that graph object through other functions later, which we're gonna be doing in a second. Uh, so I've got a second column here, which has a different graph on it. I'm using something called collapsible tree, which is not something we've covered, but again, I'll talk about that in a second as well. Uh, so pretty straightforward. Uh, if I run that and I knit it, it will take a second to put it all together, but then it will create this dashboard right here. Pretty standard dashboard layout. We get a nice little title up at the top. There are some options for customizing all this stuff. I have some graphs here. Uh, this one down here has some interactivity to it. If I hover over, it will tell me some of the more information. I can zoom and pan and scan. Uh, here I have some more interactivity, that collapsible tree. So I can look at uh, percent of GDP by each continent. So this is the percent of the world's GDP that uh, uh, each continent holds. And then within those continents, uh, the percentage of GDP held by individual countries is going on in there. Okay, so that's the basics of how we can put together a Flex dashboard. Not too difficult, actually. Uh, and uh, uh, all you gotta do is take the code we already know how to do, put it in the, 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 the template layout, and it will create a dashboard for us. Once we have our dashboard, we can publish it fairly easily. Um, all I gotta do is, uh, once I've created the dashboard, uh, there'll be a button over here called Publish. So here it says publish plot, uh, but if I just created the dashboard, if I'd hit knit, my dashboard would be opening up over here uh, and I could hit publish dashboard and it would open up a link to shinyapps.io. Uh, and uh, shinyapps.io is a RStudio run website that will host small uh, dashboards for you for free. Um, uh, and as long as they're not gonna take up a whole lot of bandwidth uh, and uh, you just need to create a shinyapps.io account and it will go ahead and uh, work with that dashboard for you. It'll host it online, you can link to it. Okay, so let's talk about now the stuff that we're gonna put on the dashboard. So, so far, so good. It's actually been pretty easy to create this dashboard, not really even that much more difficult than doing it in Tableau. Now the difficulty is, when you're creating a dashboard, you don't generally just want to take a bunch of GG plots and put them on a grid. That's not what dashboards are all about. And you would sort of expect a dashboard to have some level of interactivity, even either a particular graph having some interactivity to it where you can hover over stuff and see tool tips, that's pretty standard, uh, or things like choosing what kind of data you're looking at with a drop down menu is also very common in a dashboard. So how do we do that in R? We have not covered how to make those sorts of graphs and they are not automatic in ggplot. Uh, so there's two main, uh, sorry, there's three main different ways that we can do this. One is with something called Plotly, another is with something called HTML widgets, and a third is with Shiny. Shiny we're going to talk about in the next video, and that's where we're going to get things like drop-down menus and full interactivity, whatever we want. Uh, the other two, uh, GG plot, or, uh, Plotly and uh, HTML widgets are more uh, ready to go. You sort of plug in and it gives you the graph that you want. So I mentioned before I created this ggplot graph and then I just ran it through this ggplotly function. And what that did, uh, if we look back on the dashboard, is that uh, here's the original ggplot graph just by itself, no interactivity whatsoever. Here's the ggplot version, or the ggplotly version. The plotly is a, a JavaScript-based graphing language, uh, and there is a package in R called plotly, uh, and plotly contains the ggplotly function. If you take a ggplot object and you give it to that plotly, ggplotly function, it will just spit out a version of your ggplot graph with that kind of interactivity where you can hover over and get the tooltip of the information about the whatever point data point you're looking at right there. Uh, now actually, you can actually access the entirety of the plotly package in R. It's fully flexible, it has just as much flexibility as ggplot. I wouldn't recommend doing it. Uh, I think it's very difficult to work with. Uh, you can do whatever you want in it, but uh, also it's, it's just a real headache to work with, I think. The only thing that I really use Plotly for is this ggplotly function, where I just take a plot and I just give it to this function and it spits back out one with some basic interactivity. So if you want basic interactivity for a plot that you've already uh, created, ggplotly is a good way to go. It will give you this nice little tool tip. You can do things like zoom and box select. Uh, it won't let you do things like selecting different segments of the data, but it's a pretty good first step. It does lose some things. So for example, notice I had this annotation up here. It's gone down here. Uh, I would need to recreate that with working with Plotly directly, which I don't really want to do. So if all you want to do is take a ggplot you've created and turn it into a Plotly object that has some basic interactivity to it, you know, I can do stuff like, uh, I can box select, I can just select some of the points here and focus on those, uh, or zoom into them, uh, do whatever I want, okay? Um, 
Now that's one thing that I can do. I can use ggplotly to get some basic interactivity. The other thing I can do is HTML widget. So I mentioned Flex Dashboard, right? So the reason we're using Flex Dashboard is it's really built into this HTML widget system. HTML widgets is just sort of a set of JavaScript-based graphing tools uh, that create different kinds of graphs, uh, and they have interactivity built into them, and you're just sort of creating them as standard types of graphs. And they often have a fair amount of, inter of customizability that you can do uh, work that work out pretty well. Um, and so uh, there are a bunch of different kinds of HTML widgets that work in R. Uh, so if you go to the htmlwidgets.org page, uh, you look at the R showcase, and there's a bunch of different options here for different kinds of graphs. You can, so here, for example, is a map uh, with uh, called it's a leaflet with some heat points on it. Uh, we can plot time series in a, in a, a dynamic way. It's got Plotly itself. Um, Lots of different kinds of stuff. There's also stuff for uh, for tables. There's data tables for, for really uh, interactive types of tables that you might want to show. Um, so there's just a lot of options here. I recommend going through the gallery and seeing what's available. Uh, this, for example, this collapsible tree is an HTML widget. Uh, so I looked through the gallery. I said, that looks interesting. I'm going to make that widget. And it's got all the kinds of things that you would expect in a, uh, in a dashboard, the kind of interactivity that you would want to see. So... So far, what have we covered? We covered how to create a Flex dashboard by installing the Flex dashboard package, uh, making an R Markdown uh, document in the Flex dashboard template, um, and we've talked about how to put our objects into the different parts and columns of the Flex dashboard. There are, of course, a lot of customization options that we did not cover. When we're talking about stuff on this level, it's really hard to, just not, to put everything in a video. There's just too much information. So if you want to do anything that's not exactly standard in a Flex dashboard, I would really just recommend reading the documentation. Uh, the rmarkdown.rstudio.com uh, slash Flex dashboard has lots and lots of information about how you can customize Flex dashboards however you want. You can change the different kinds of layout options. Uh, you can make it like a story where as you scroll down, it goes from one thing to the other. Uh, lots of different options there uh, that I'm not going to cover. Because I think we can get, because uh, really what I would recommend is starting out with just the basics, build some basic graphs, and then as you start making more and more dashboards, you will run into things that you don't know how to do, and you'll learn how to do that one thing at that one time. And I find that's a very effective way to learn complex systems like this one. So we know how to create a basic flex dashboard. Uh, we know how to then cr put some interactivity into our uh, plots. Uh, if we have a ggplot object that we just want to add a little bit of interactivity to, uh, the ability to zoom in or out or, or do tooltips and hover overs and things like that, uh, you can see all the different options that are available to you here. You know, zooming, lasso select, panning, zooming. You can download things as, as images. You can compare different data points. Then you want the ggplotly function, which is in the plotly package. Uh, there is more Plotly stuff available to you, but uh, that is, I think, a little bit more difficult. If you really feel like getting into it, then you can. If you already know JavaScript and Plotly, it might be a little bit easier for you. Uh, then we can also put in HTML widgets. Uh, lots of different options here uh, for different kinds of graphs that we can put in. Uh, but again, you know, dashboards don't necessarily have to be fully interactive if you just want to make a bunch of ggplot bar graphs and put them on there. If it's a good dashboard, it's a good dashboard. If you want a little bit of interactivity, put it through a Plotly. Uh, if you want something special, then you want some HTML widgets to put in there. Okay, that's it. Uh, next time we will talk about Shiny and how to make things fully interactive. Thank you.